Hello colleagues, hello everyone. My name is Deng Ho Tong Min and I am a researcher from India. A. My main research objective is to raise awareness on the importance of data or sad data to provide spatial information to better monitoring earth surface environments. So the topic today is how Mikolinta motion can be quantified from space by radar interferometry. Here we begin to spend a few words about radar interferometry. Radar is a technique that allows us to measure the distance from a satellite to a target on the ground, for example, R1 in these first measurements. The distance measured R1 can be understood at the zoom of many lambda wavelengths of the radar system plus a certain residue. You can think that the R1 can be measured at satellite to target rule like this one. The advantage of satellites is that they can return to the same position to collect data after a certain period of time. For example, six days or 10 days with the Saturn 1 constellation. We assume that during this period of time, there is an a displacement, we don't know, for example, a subsidence, earthquake, volcano, and so on, that caused the target's position to be changed, and thus we had a measurement R2. Accordingly, by taking the difference R1 minus R2, we can directly calculate the delta R difference. The delta R difference can be converted to delta V phase difference by this similar formula because we know that one lambda wavelength corresponds to a phase cycle either 2 pi or 360 degrees. We call this phase difference the interferometry phase. With a wavelength of about 5.6 cm like C band, the interferometry phase would be extremely sensitive to any displacement on the Earth's surface. The emit constants this phase different, we call it ferrogram. So the basic idea for displacement mapping is that we need to get the data before and after the event. We can then compute the interferogram and quantify its phase difference. Thus the principle of sign interferometry or simply INSA is it easy? Yes, uh, it is sometimes, but it's not really often. Why? Because the satellite is very far from Earth, it is about 750 km, the radar signal traveling from space to the ground, and of course it will be affected by the atmospheric disturbance. That's why over the past 20 years, many inside meters has been developed to improve the accuracy of measurements under atmospheric disturbance and rapid variation. Because as you know, we cannot measure the displacement in the forest, at least at the current situation of the satellite from space. In future, I mean in the next uh, about, three, uh, about three years, 2023 or 2024, we will have the biomass, uh, the biomass missions. We will have the B band, so in this case, we had a wavelength about 69 centimeters. So in this case, something we we can do something displacement in the forest areas, but not at the moment. So, what is the formula to show the problem here? That we are not just using two images, but uh, a long series of SARS data over time. Accordingly, we can identify stable targets with a system scatterer, we call BS, and this distributed scatterer, DS. Then the algorithm only computes all the process on the candidates, and then can com can uh, compute and remove noise very well. BS inside is famous because targets are often associated with stable man-made structures, such as tower, buildings, 
and so on and it means it's very good signal and therefore built in sub techniques provide high resistance information at stable locations however the bed density is often limited when we go to outside the city and it leads to a spa distribution of useful point in the calculation and the processing to overcome it the recent combined technique allows us to combine both target i mean both bs and the ds in the calculation to avoid the spanness of measure points in the processing in other words the combined approach is an advanced technique that allows optimal density of the measuring points and then give us the highest accuracy the other techniques which we will be called SPARS or small baseline success is a technique for processing dead points compared with the BS and BS dead or combined techniques at best is less accurate because it cannot control the phase unwrapping accurately why because uh, for example that when whenever they have one phase cycle is wrong it can end up with a certain uh, um, value like 29 millimeter in c band wrong immediately so the algorithms are ready but we, we cannot do it directly on the big data because it, it's not really efficient. We need a better strategy processing change for assemble to work on a reduced data set for the distributed targets. This one is a good one. Kamsa is a, a feasible processing change by, based on this estimator to account for both persistent and distributed targets. Kamsa is indeed an INSA image compression technique for today's big data error. So there are algorithms already, but uh, there is a challenge when we are dealing with the delta Y area. So uh, there are many studies for small coverage. However, whenever study size become big, for example, for the tectonic movement or national scale mapping, they automatically switch to incoherent processing. Uh, in other words, they they do processing in uh, many small areas separately, and then they try to mosaic them together. With the sentient one um, data, it's good. Uh, because it is free and is uh, open for everyone but it's also a challenge for us because of the massy data we need to be handled particularly how to make sure the result is consistent over a full wide area so are we ready for such coherent processing we need a better strategy to have a consistent result in wide coverage areas this is why we have proposed a feasible processing chain here with an example at the Mekong Delta for illustration. First of all, we can form a single look complex data from the birth information of the sentient one. So we believe this is essential for long-term study. To cover Mekong Delta Y, a sentient one single frame is characterized by three squads and 21 bursts. The bursts are then merged to generate a single look hamlet or SLC dataset. The calculations were done in a cluster system, which have a lot to do in parallel processing. We have tried many times, and we do believe that the gap cost correction. So basically, that is the, the one we do we dealing with um, the atmospheric turbine based on modeling and gap cost data is freely open, and gap cost correction is the key to have a consistent results. To do it, we did fake calibration at the single low complex data level. So from that, we can freely 
from uh, whatever interferogram, whatever the interfer uh, in a whatever combination interferogram, and then we can we uh, can be single loop or multi loop. So it's very um, flexible for processing. To test our performance, we exploited the EdPass processor from the list path and the combined technique, persistent scatterer and distributed scatterer were carried out by employing my Tomosa platform. Let's look at the performance. Now we try to combine the algorithm from Tomosa and SPAS from the most recent developed tools list path. We can immediately see that by using the more recent algorithm from a Tumosa. So basically that is the, the combined technique. The result is better in the same up uh, a denser distribution measurements points. Now let's take a look. Uh, now let's take a closer look at this result. This is the Ho Chi Minh City. This is the counter. Do you know where it is? Yes, it is a capital phenomenon, Cambodia. So uh, you know, uh, so it is very um, evident that remote sensing or satellite image is truly a technology without borders. So, um, as you know, standing on the Earth's surface, is it easy to um, to believe that the crab beneath our feet is stable, but it is not the case. The crab beneath our feet has a quiver that are constantly in motion. When buildings are constructed or when company exploit crowd water, basically it will generate uh, it will be generally with a human impact. The, the aquifers will, um, uh, will, will, will be affected by such um, activity. Basically it will change the structure of the underground layers by the human impact and all that creates the crowd sifting which may not be immediately apparent, but over time, over time, these small drops can create a potential damage structures and can collapse wells and can become sinkhole and so on. And that is a terrible, and we want to avoid. Here we are able to measure the average subsidence trends over the past five years of the entire Mekong Delta region in a single frame consistent of 10 million measurements. Greens are stable. White red indicates an unstable infrastructure area. Looking at the results, we can see that the population characterized of the rural Mekong Delta are along canals and roads. And this allow, and this one, uh, we have a lot to, to track the overall subsidence across the delta. We can zoom in on a small area in Travan province to see more clearly. Population cluster along canals and roads are evident in this example. This is in, uh, from uh, Wajanbo canals, which was completed five years ago. There are two dyes to protect the estuary, the estuary at the same time helping ships carrying coal from uh, camp from Kampha Guangdin to this um, thermal power plant, we can see that the two dyes are affected, are strongly affected by waves and so the size of instability, kind of unstable. We also see a particular unstable area here. We can even tie travel and tell you how the crowd has moved since 2015. I just want to recall that the satellite is about 550 kilometers from the boot season we are surveying, which is equivalent to the, the distance from Saigon to Bangkok, Thailand. So with such distance, and we have the ability to identify and track the deformation at a millimeter scale. And that is one of the amazing things about SAR data, about inside technology. So we can map subsidence for a very large region, the Mekong Delta Y, as you can see, 200 feet, uh, 250 kilometer, and 300 feet kilometer. To do a validation, we consider comparing this result to 
a small razor an analysis so basically that's we we done for the dental y subsidence analysis and we do the same processing for just small resin analysis uh, in Ho Chi Minh City to be sure that our processing in La area in La coverage is consistent. So let's move to Ho Chi Minh City areas for details. These figures um, were produced by using the same track at the one on last scale. So basically that uh, the, we using the descending tracker 18 to generate uh, this performance. The cross distribution is showing here which indicates an identical spatial distribution with less than one millimeter per year difference of velocity. We can see that the inner city areas like digit 1, 3, 10 are quite stable. Unstable areas with subsidence occurs in the area with the sub, um, subsoil like, um, like the one along the second river set in, uh, in Bintan uh, District 7 and also in the southwest um, of the city like the District 8 and Bintan. We focus on this area where the subsidence is critical to appreciate the performance. We zoom in on the area of the um, the south uh, includes uh, District 7A and along the um, Waverland uh, Street. So basically, it's from the south of Saigon. So, in fact, before 1975, the areas were almost unstable, uh, almost un uninhabited. So, basically, because they are mostly subsoil. So when building a, a house, we have to be careful because it's easily to to lose the um, the instrument or to lose the pie easily because there is no uh, because there there is no concrete um, soil there. So here are the results from three different data, um, but they say the same subsidence distribution. Of course, when going to a little bit details. There will be a difference at the profile along this A, B, but it's very tiny. No doubt, the maximum subtitle rate is up to minus 80 millimeter per year. It means that this area is very uh, risky, so it's, it's kind of high risk area. We can even go back in time to see how subtitle progress. We take a, a closer look at a very famous area on the banks of the Saigon River. Have you noticed? This is Jiu, this is the Vang Tan, this is the Saigon River, and this is the Saigon Bridge, and of course the famous Nguyen Hu Can Pen Phuong Street. This street is famous for for its flooding problem. To avoid it, usually that's a uh, after a certain uh, year, the street is often rise higher and higher to avoid uh, flooding, and then it uh, and then it leads to many houses around this street to be lower by nearly one meter, and this may and this may trouble for the people living there because the the household uh, usually worry. Uh, the house may be turned into the water town whenever uh, it's come to rain or rains heavily and the street will be easily to go into a certain river. It's also easy to see that this area is extremely unstable because its underlying geology is similar to the dust one in the district A of Benchan. So critical subsidence devices the, the streets and of course they require regular maintenance and then they make the street rise under elevation to avoid the subsidence to avoid the flooding and so on so um, we provide feasible coherent processing to handle the dental wide scale uh, what we can learn from this um, uh, strategy is um, the gut goes, uh, the atmospheric correction is possible at the level of single look combat data and this is very flexible for 
our processing, uh, we can do it in SPAS or in a combined technique wherever we want. And this is essential because it can help a lot in um, mitigate atmospheric turbulence in a large scale inside processing. To our knowledge, this is the first ever demonstration on the Mekong Delta using uh, a, a coherent processing. So, uh, sending one bit data for large scale inside processing is promising. Finally, for more information, I welcome you in this forum where everyone can share information, help each other, and develop topics related to radar interferometry field. Thank you for your attention.